referee Luke Brown watching the action very carefully. There's a four on one. Oh. There's going to be Stats and Bales out of the ring, ladies and gentlemen. If you're going to hit the crusher, you're going to have to hit him a lot harder than that to see him get in the register. Big Jack, huge fan of Veteran of the Ring Wars. He's been around at least 20 years than I know of. And he's still going strong. There's a standing arm bar from the inside trying to turn it out. He turns it in. Here he kicks the leg up, rolls him over. Excellent move, head scissors. You don't want to try that on your neighbors, folks, unless you know what you're doing. That'll break your wrist. Yes, sir. Is it harder to uh, wrestle with all that clothing on? Some people find it uh, a lot easier to wrestle with it all on. Some people find it a lot, uh, a lot harder. For myself, I never could stand anything on except tights and boots. That mask must be extremely hot because those lights right. there are 120 degree lights. You can imagine what the temperature in the ring is. Look at this, look at this. a little jousting going on here. I think the assassin is, uh, he's being a little cute. He's capable of a lot more than what he's doing right now. Watch him. He's not called the assassin for nothing. You're thinking what I'm thinking, right? There's a hip lock from Sage Jack. Took him down, got the arm again. Here's the fans are crying for the heart punch. Stasiak so can throw a right hand at your chest shuffle with a cave in a Mack truck. Tremendous power if he hits just the chest height. And where he learned to do it, so he has to have probably one of the hardest, hardest punches in professional wrestling today. Straight on, one on one. Where's he from originally? Originally Stan Hales from St. Louis, Missouri. He came out to the Northwest a few years ago. He's made this his home now. He lives here in Portland. Josh is getting ready to retire. I think this may be his last year or so. Anybody out there that's looking for a man that everybody knows in the Pacific Northwest, for a sales center, what have you, Josh is the guy to, the guy to see. A couple of forearms to the skin. Is he talking to me? The assassin just called out your name. Well, he better say it with eloquence and humility. I have to book all these guys, Chuck. I have to put up with them. Some of them are easy to do business with them. Others would be easy to do business, but make it extremely hard on you. Let me ask you now. They've been in the ring, in the business, for a long time. Other wrestlers we've seen this evening have been a little more crafty, a little bit more scientific. They don't seem to be working on one area. They're plugging it out. They're going after the money. And Sash, Sash will barroom with you any day of the week. You want to throw a shot at him or hit him in the jaw, he'll come right back at you with six of them. He's got the assassin backing up now, looking for some place to go. It's hard wrestling an extremely big man, because if he lays on you, it'll wear you down really quickly, and that's what he'll try to do, lay on you or hurt you. There's a knee. Look, at there's a goal for the... Oh! Quick. That was a try for the hard one. And also for big men, fast. Yeah. Big men, We talked about the fact of wearing so much clothing and uh, wrestling. How about getting the holes on a man that wears that much clothing? Sometimes it's a uh, it's, uh, godsend when you got some clothing on, because when you're sweating, the guy slips out of your hand. When you've got a lot of material on, like they're outside, there goes the judo chop to the throat. Punch to the side of the jaw, slammed his head on the ring apron, back in the ring. When you got all that clothing on, you're a lot easier to get a hold of. I found it that way, where wrestling guys that wore upper body tights. Personally, that's why I never wore them. I got enough to get a hold of them, I got all this hair on my body. But when you're wearing a rug like that, they're easy to get a hold of. Sometimes, some guys use it as a defense. And this assassin, he doesn't have his name for being a real nice, clean cut fella. Still outside 
Frank. There he goes out again. Bang his head on that ring apron again. That's very little panning him. Look at this. Three guys just give him a shot to the gut. Look out. Oh. Slam that shoulder in that turn. No, he hit the post, didn't he? No, he took on the post. He got in that post, that left shoulder. He can't even grab the ropes with it. That's a solid steel post. Turnbuckle. And those turnbuckles are wrapped with tape and a little bit of leather, and that's it. Well, not only that, he took him to the outside of that turnbuckle, so he said all metal. He throws that arm up over your head, whether you know it or not. If you're not fast enough to bring it down, the heart punch is coming right behind that because he's got that arm clear. You can't bring your shoulder around and block it. Jack teaming up with all people, Hacksaw Sawyer in Tacoma here. What's that day? On the third. That's at the Bicentennial Pavilion? Yes, it is. Okay, tickets to Custom Church Shop, 475-6960. the top of watch this. Big Jack looks to be in a little bit of trouble. There's the body. Oh. Right on him. That's three. That's, That's it. The Assassin takes the fall. Fighting stars of Pacific Northwest from Atlanta, Georgia. Formerly the Tampa University. This is Terry Gibbs. Well, you know, I appreciate that, Dutch, and, uh, you know, since I've been in the Northwest area, I've had some top matches, like I've said before, out here, and I'm continuing having some top matches. Uh, top caliber wrestlers are right in this area right now, and if you want a shot at a World Heavyweight Champion, you got to beat somebody in this area. And before I go any further, I'd like to say something about a one Hacksaw, Hacksaw Sawyer. You know, after he won that belt from Rip Oliver, Hack Sawyer came right to me and he says, Terry Gibbs, he says, any time that you want a title match, you've got it. And that is showing a lot of guts and a lot of intestinal fortitude from a guy. And I'm telling you right now, I think he's 100% champion and he's got a lot going for him and he's got a lot of class and I've got a lot of respect for the guy. And if I ever do meet the guy, I will have my P's and Q's ready for that guy. Well, we're, uh, we're really amazed at your prowess in the ring, Terry. We can see nothing but good things for you and we understand that you were ranked nationally by about 10 or 12 there back in Atlanta, Georgia. We're looking for about number five or four spot out of here within two or three weeks, we hope. Well, I'm going to give it all I got, okay? That's all we can say. Good luck, Terry. Folks, back to Jeff Randell. Thanks, Dutch. I just want to say that uh, both Dutch and I filling in this evening for Mr. Frank Bonima, who's been out here for a number of years. And Frank has been taken to Emanuel Hospital in Portland, Oregon the uh, coronary care unit and both Dutch and I and all the wrestling fans wish him very good luck. Yes we do Chuck, here's the story, the, the assassin going to work right away on stage yet. Look at this, this is more like a tier nine brawl, look at this. Jack's hotter than a pistol. He's got the assassin backpedal in there. Says, okay, you want to punch? Go ahead and punch. Look out. Ooh. Right hand to the side of the ear. Kicked out on two. Well, 270 pounds of him has come back. Yeah, as I was saying before about Frank, uh, for the information of the fans here in Washington and Oregon, Frank is in stable condition, folks. He did have a mild heart attack from the reports we've had. We wish him nothing but the finest. We hope he returns soon. And as far as that goes, I really want to thank you, Chuck, for coming to the rescue of Big Time Wrestling tonight, because without you, I don't think we could have done this show tonight. We really appreciate it. Well, that's, that's uh, very kind of you. I don't believe that, but thank you very much, sir. You're modest. Uh, folks, this is a guy behind the scenes. Every show that you see on television, Chuck directs it. You never see him, but he's the guy that makes everything click. All the camera angles, all the announcing, all the and all the fall around, whatever you do as a television person. Off the top rope. He's not going to fall for it this time. That's Dutch. what you call getting your innards shook up. Look out! Hard punch! Oh, goodbye. 
it's over. That's it, it's over. You don't walk. One, two, three. Yes, sir. St. Jack wins that fall. That second fall took about 38 seconds from what I saw on the clock. Look, Cal, he tries for that hard punch again, and that assassin bails out. Now, we're going to have to play this fall to a TV time limit, is that correct? Well, you know, the time we have remaining, according to the timekeeper down there, is four minutes. So they've got four minutes to try to pin one another. And the assassin wisely bailed out of the ring to get away from that crusher. Sajak's got a cut on his stomach. I don't know where he got that from. Oh! Has he got something in his mask, Chuck? Did you... The fans are screaming he's got something in his... Sajak... Oh, look out! Jack in a lot of pain against Ralph. Oh, threw a forearm to the chest to the assassin. I thought the assassin had something in that second fall. Well, I don't know. I've seen headbutts before, but uh, that, that it bails out again from the hard punch. That's one advantage of wearing full and tight. You can hide stuff. There's a hard shot to the side of the head. Forearm to the back. Look out, Hart! And out he goes again. This guy's fighting for time. He's stolen. Just lose Brown counting. Don't forget, folks, on the 13th, Rowdy Piper and Playboy Bunny Rose. There's another headbutt. That looks a little low, Chuck. That hurts, Sam. There's a good shot to the gut. That doubled me up. I didn't that one. They just hit the, assa the assassin and hurt Hold his it. hand. What's going on here? Bra the referee has grabbed him. He's checking that mask. The free test continue around. Another headbutt. Trying for the pin. One, two. They got kicked down on the count of two. Boy, this is a Pier 9 brawl. There's a shot to the kidneys. You can't turn your back in this business, folks, or you'll get, you'll get hit. There goes, try for the hard punch. He bails out again. Dejak's been around too long to go for any of the assassin's shenanigans. If he's got something in that mask, the referee's going to disqualify him if he finds it. There's a kick to the stomach. Hard shot. Oh. All right, there's the bell lab, Dutch, and it is a ballroom ball. They're standing, exchanging blows. They got tried for a pin. That's and kicked out. There's a, every time Stock goes for that hard punch. Out he goes. He got one of them in that second fall. I don't think he wants to take another one. That'll... That'll knock the wind out of you in a heck of a hurry. This has turned into a slugfest. The referee just letting them go. Sometimes you just can't control them. You have to let them go. Oh, Jack taking him to the wood barrel. Look out. Now he goes again. That's exactly what he's doing, Chuck. He doesn't want any part of that, and I don't blame him. I take the easy way out, too. He's got to, uh, he's got to come back. Uh, we've got less than a minute, Dutch. We've got less than a minute. You're right. There's the bell. There's the bell. Yep. They're going to fall a piece. Hold on, they're still going to go at it. I think this bout is a time limit draw, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's see. Fall a piece time on the drum. You're right, and uh, we don't have any more uh, commercial positions, so we're going to hold it right here. And we've got an interview coming up with Rip Oliver and the Assassins, so they should be on their way on here, out here right about now, Chuck. Uh, Dutch, you've got a great fall lineup coming up.